What's going on guys, it's Shellshock here, and today we've got an Object 279 early battle. Let's get stuck into it, shall we? So first up, this tank. Obviously, one of the most overpowered tanks in the game, if not the most overpowered tank in the game. There have been some crazy results in this tank, and this one, this one is by far probably one of the craziest I've ever seen. Now we've got, uh, our hero is... Baton 4 IK4? I don't know if that's supposed to be said a different way. Um, and yeah, obviously he's got the tank here, as we can see. He's got a nice camouflage on it. I actually don't know what that camouflage is, but it looks pretty stylish. And uh, this is probably one of the most uh, overpowered features of the tank, is the fact that there's no lower plate. Where are you going to shoot? Nobody knows. So anyway, we've got him coming up into a position here. I'll go back into that view. And he's going to take up position on the... Uh, top of the hill here, next to the castle, which is a good position to get early shots on tanks rolling up the hill. And he spots the mouse. The mouse is coming in at an angle. Oh, oh, he's over-angled there. He's turned it too much. Should have kept coming in on that angle. The mill's taken up. Now, that's going to be a tough nut to crack hiding behind the rock over there. Although, it's not like the mill has any way to actually shoot at him anyway. Pops one into the tortoise. Nice little... Uh, it's funny because the tank is the tortoise is supposed to have all this front armor, but it's got so many frontal weak spots that its armor is effectively irrelevant. Um, so we see there the Emil tried to pop a shot in. Just it, there's nothing. There's nowhere for them. There's literally nowhere for the enemies to shoot them. I think there might be like a tiny little cupola that like has a one percent chance of hitting, maybe. And this turtle, he this tortoise, he is just he's not learning, is he? He's just gonna keep popping up, popping up. There's no way for him to approach that hill that isn't gonna get him shot. And he puts another one into the 277, which tank, uh, uh, the 277 is usually quite a formidable tank. And he's just, yeah, not even bothered. Again, one of the tortoise. You'd think you'd pull back. Honestly, you'd think you would stop pushing forward. And he actually gets penned there, right through the front of his tank, um, which I'll show you in a second. Oh, far out. Yeah, straight through the front corner there. Uh, obviously, heat rounds. Oh, and he gets splashed by the arty. <sighs> Bloody arty. But even then, the arty hit him and only did 167 damage, which, in the grand scheme of things, is not a lot of damage. So anyway, he's keeping an eye on that 277. He's going to go push around the lower part of the castle now, if he can not get blocked by his allies. All right, so he's got that. He's got his eyes set on the uh, mouse, I reckon. He just and he. he he comes around the corner, nothing, doesn't need the side scrape or anything. And they just, there's nothing that they can do. So he's going to come down, take the low ground now, so they can't get any easy shots into his tank. Puts one into the Carnarvon. He's got him tracked, so he's dead to rights. And he ammo racks him for 800. As if he couldn't get any more lucky, driving this tank, he then ammo racks a tank. What more could you ask for? So he's he's being real careful here because he doesn't want to get slapped by any tank that's sitting up the road. He wants to wait, and he's just been spotted there. Now this T30 could definitely do some serious damage if he's got the big gun on him. He could do like 800 alpha, so you know, well, it's got I think it's got 750 alpha, but it can roll for like 800. So yeah, you don't want to get shot. You buy that. So he's kind of just playing a bit of cat and mouse here with this T30. Gets shot at from the back, I'm assuming it's that uh, 277. Still alive and kick it. Look, look at that. <laughs> he left all of these allies to fight off this one tank and he comes back and they're all dead. Oh, it's the Emil. Sorry, my bad. And he, he just doesn't even have a care. The Emil's probably reloading by the looks of it. And that just shows how light the Emil is. He just lightly taps him, 43 ram damage. And so, it's coming down. He's got four alli three allies left, and the enemy team has nine tanks? Ten tanks. The enemy team has ten tanks left still. So that 277, he's still alive. He's pulled back here. So we're just waiting. And he doesn't, he doesn't want to stick to that corner, because he keeps getting shot at by the arty. And while he's only getting 200 damage, 150 damage, it's it adds up. It adds up, definitely. So he's going to try and sneak in a shot here on this uh, other Emil 2. 
He snaps one into the engine there. Oh, didn't get a fire, sadly. Is he going to stick around for another shot here? Is the Emil just going to... The Emil's going to sit there and take it. He goes for another one right into the track. The Emil is now tracked. I think he repairs it, though. Yep, he's repaired it. Now, he's going to... He's going to turn around. He's got to take... He's got to push for one side. So, he's now in a 1v... What is that? 1v9 situation. And, again, just look at the... He can just be so brash. He, he does not have to worry at all about getting shot from the front. Puts it in the lower plate. Takes down his enemy tier 10 heavy tank number. So now it's a 1 vs 8. We've got 1 tier 10 tank, 4 tier S9 tanks, and 3 tier 8 tanks. Now he gets spotted there. I'm not... Oh, it's the tank destroyer on the other side of the hill. He's already up to... Almost 7,000 damage. This is actually just crazy. And this T-54 just doesn't stand a chance. Got to fire on him. Obviously, he's got an automatic fire extinguisher because I'm pretty sure that was one tick. And he tries to stop him from getting him around. Oh, gets one shot into him. I think he low rolled though, so that's all right. Nothing, nothing too serious there. Now, he's going to go back to the cap because he really kind of has to get a reset. He's got to get a wiggle on because you've got to think that Emil's probably going to be in the way. That T-30 is probably going to be in the way. So, he's He's got really 30 seconds to get to the cap. And uh, it's going to be pretty, pretty close call. Oh, sneaky bugger. He's got two enemy tanks coming up behind him. Far out. How's he going to do this? We've got T-30. Takes a shot in the T-30. Nice juicy hull of the tank there. He's going to pop one into the mill now. Oh, no, he's going for the T-30 again. T-30 bounces off the front of his tank. He doesn't really have to worry about that, Emil. Again, just look just look at the front armor profile on this tank. It's crazy. Now the T-30's cowering behind the rock here. He's got his last normal shell. And he takes out the T-30. And someone, someone has reset the cap. Can you believe it? They were 20 seconds out from winning and someone has reset the cap. Oh, they probably thought, oh, we've got eight tanks left. Someone in the enemy team is probably screaming, no cap, kill all, no cap, kill all. And I bet they are going to live to regret that. Now, given that he's got that extra minute to make it to the base, he's, he, can, he can think about it a bit more. He doesn't need to bum rush a straight direct route. He can come around the flanks a bit. Now, he's almost up to 10,000 damage. He's got 4k blocked, 7 kills. Oh, he is going to have a handful of medals after this. More than a handful. And we've actually got an artillery. Oh, oh that was not what you wanted. Oh. We've got the rim. He's got the heat round as well. That's not, not too great. Be shooting through kind of obstacles and stuff like that. He's just got to go for the base. This is how he knows there's two... The rim and the uh, object are in the base. So there's three enemy tanks. The other artillery is probably over by the spawn still. Uh, and the other tanks actually haven't been spotted. Oh, there's one's been spotted on the hill, sorry. Right, and he takes out the artillery there. Rim pokes around. Tries to get another shot into him. Bounces that. Uh, I mean, what do you expect? Crazy tank. Crazy, crazy armor, crazy bounces, right? So he rolls up. He doesn't want to expose himself too much here because you don't know that that, that tank that was on the hill may have actually pushed up onto the hill and might get side shots into him if he pushes out through the gap here. So he's just going to play it safe. He's going to try and take out the rim first. And the rim puts a HE round into him. Doing 79 damage. Not going to cut it. Needs to hit like another bloody five or six of those for it to actually kill him. Enemy artillery... Strikes him for 10 HP. What a whopping amount of damage that is. And the rim, he, he just, he's got to stop poking. He's going to push out here. Brave, brave move. You can hear a shot has been whiffed. Just missed him. He's going to push in on this rim. And he's going to come around the corner at an angle. Oh, and there's, there's no, the rim just, he, completely donked that up. He should have been pre-aiming around facing at least the direction that the tank's going to come, so that's on him. But um, now we're in a 1 versus 3 situation. He's got 
nine nine kills nine kills and it's easy it is easy for him nothing to worry about and I'm not trying to discredit him he's obviously a very good player he's been playing this very well picking his fights correctly he just um, he's just aided by this tank and he just one shots the uh, GW there nothing to worry about what is the alpha on these uh, shells actually uh, so 440 alpha 340 pen on the premiums and 258 pen on the non premiums. Wow, that is a that is a sizable jump. What about the HE? What's the pen on those? Ooh, not that much HE penetration. Uh, so what do we got left? We've got a, a tortoise, that tortoise from the beginning of the battle, and the TS5. Obviously, the tortoise did learn his lesson and he stuck behind that hill uh, and kind of just became a non-factor. Honestly, I, I think taking the tortoise up the hill was probably a bad decision. Per personally, I'd go with the banana for the tortoise. And then you could hide, you could angle your tank, like, if you if you stick to the left side, then you can angle your tank kind of behind the building and hide that big big weak spot in the corner there. So he's going to he's gonna pressure the cap and try and bring them to him. Obviously, he's taking a bit of a risk here because you never want to... Oh, is he going to... Nope, nope, he's going. I was going to say, capping it out is not the best tactic because obviously the enemy tanks then they know where you are and you, you want to try and keep the element of surprise surprise definitely helps in this game 100 percent so he's uh moving across the open field here could be dangerous depending on where the enemy tanks are obviously the tortoise isn't on the hill anymore and he's going to take a bet and assume that the tortoise has come back down on his own side. Now, I wouldn't be surprised, given that the TS5 hasn't been spotted, and this is Himmeldorf, Himmelsdorf, that um, he actually has been AFK the whole battle and hasn't moved. I genuinely would not be surprised if that was the case. There's the tortoise. Oh, that could have been dangerous. And he slaps the tortoise right in that weak spot again. Tortoise is out of the game. It is now one versus one with a most likely AFK tank. I'm going to assume. Yeah, like you, you can't survive this long on Himmelsdorf and not get spotted. And I like to see that he's not running premium consumables too. I, I personally don't run large repair kits or anything like that. It's just a personal preference for me. But um, left on 34 HP, that actually could have been very, very, very upsetting. Because when you've got almost 12,000 damage and almost 12 kills, yeah, getting like ended like that is just a... Uh, nah, you don't want that. And let's have a look. And yeah, he's AFK. Now, I wonder if he's going to be a bit cheeky here and try and get rid of all of his shells so that he gets that... Um, oh, I forgot the name of the medal. The medal that you get when you kill the enemy tank with the last shell in your tank. Because he's got four shells left. I think he's going to do it, eh? Oh, he's being cheeky. He's being cheeky. Offload the rest of his shells. And... Aiming for the engine deck. Just in case. Puts him down. Last shell in his tank. 12 kills. 13,000 damage. 5,000 damage blocked. 34 HP left. What an insane battle here for Bat. I'm going to call you Bat. What an insane battle. He's got 1 minute and 20 seconds left on the clock. Could have been an upset there with that tortoise. But anyway, let's have a look at the end plates. So as I said, we've got a crazy handful of medals here. Going from the left, we've got an Ace Tanker. We've got a Faden's Medal for the la killing the last enemy tank with the last shell in your tank. We've got the uh, Pascucci's Medal for killing two enemy SPGs. We've got a Pool's Medal for 10 kills. A Defender for obviously defending the base. A High Caliber for his whopping 13,018 damage dealt. We've got the Steel Wall for the 5,030 damage blocked by armor, and obviously the Top Gun. Uh, having a look now at the team scores, he did like, oh, what is that? I'd say at least like seven times the damage combined for the rest of his team. Maybe not seven, maybe more like five. But still, an insane carry here. He's got 1,878 base experience. That is crazy. 
actually lost money because he did fire a lot of premium rounds, even with a premium account, lost money. Um, and yeah, he had overall 2,950 experience. What a crazy battle. I am just gobsmacked by the insaneness of this tank. And I understand a little bit. It is like the last personal reward tank. So you've got to put a lot of effort in to get it. But still, this is just crazy. Anyway, guys, that's it from me. Have a lovely day. Don't forget to get down in the comments. Tell me what you reckon and strike that like button. Cheers.